gallstones are very, very common. And essentially, the purpose of a gallbladder is to concentrate the bile. And whenever bile is concentrated, tiny crystals form. Now, these crystals gradually increase in size to form gallstones. They can range from um, half a millimeter in size to the size of golf balls. Generally speaking, they may be made from, uh, the most of them are actually made from cholesterol. 20% um, or so are made from another substance called bilirubin or uh, what we call a bile pigment. They're called bile pigment stones. Gallstones, as I say, are very, very common and they can present in a number of ways depending on where they are. The most common symptom for gallstones is what we call biliary colic. So what happens is um, an individual will eat food. Generally speaking, this is rich fatty food. And then what happens is your body tells your gallbladder to contract releasing the bile to help digest that food. So when the bile, when the, when the gallbladder contracts, it contracts on these stones, causing pain. And typically the pain is in your upper abdomen. It radiates through to the back and it may cause some nausea or vomiting. Other symptoms can happen when gallstones migrate from the gallbladder into other areas of the biliary system or the bile system uh, and those can be more serious. Um, they can cause jaundice uh, or severe sepsis, they can cause pancreatitis which can be life-threatening. Often these things uh, require hospital admissions. Another sort of intermediate type um, symptom stroke, uh, signs and symptoms and illness caused by gallstones is when you have repeated sort of crushing and crunching of the gallbladder on the gallstones causing inflammation or infection. Sometimes this infection can in fact be quite severe requiring hospital admission and intravenous antibiotics. So the symptoms from gallstones can be wide and varied. The answer is yes, but generally speaking, um, you don't pass all of them. So most people have more than one gallstones. They have several, multiple dozens, and sometimes these gallstones, one or two of these gallstones can pass out of the gallbladder and through the bile system. Now, actually that, whilst it sounds like a good thing, isn't the best thing because it can cause severe problems and we alluded to earlier that this may cause um, obstructive jaundice, jaundice or cholangitis which is a very severe form of sepsis uh, requiring hospital admission um, and you know maybe life-threatening. The other is whether where the gallstone passes out of the gallbladder and causes inflammation of the pancreas in a condition called pancreatitis. Again this can be life-threatening and very, very, uh, very, very severe. So in general, there are several people in the world that have gallstones and don't know anything about it. So if your gallstones were found incidentally or, or by accident and you don't actually have any problems from them, it is quite safe to leave them well alone. You only manage gallstones or gallbladder stones uh, when they cause problems such as pain. Uh, is it interfering with your life? Is it stopping you eating certain foods? Is it causing you that life-threatening sepsis? Have you been to hospital with it? Have you had pancreatitis? That's when you must have your gallbladder and your gallstones treated. But if you have no symptoms, it is quite reasonable to leave your gallbladder with your gallstones well alone. As we say, gallstones are very, very common the, and should uh, you and your physician or doctor or surgeon decide that you need treatment for gallstones, the only real treatment for gallstones is to remove the gallbladder and containing the gallstones. That is surgery. That is usually a day case procedure. Uh, that is a general anaesthetic and that is a procedure called a laparoscopic cholecystectomy removal of the gallbladder containing the gallstones, uh, usually by keyhole surgery. There are some medications that are available, 
but the evidence suggests that this is they are not very effective and only reserved for people that are not fit for surgery the very elderly people with lots of illnesses people that wouldn't survive an operation 